Hello from Shalom Acres. I think you can probably see those little crawling things in the camera there. Those are called, uh, I'm going to probably butcher this name, Tritogramma wasps. And these little things are, uh, yeah, you can see they're almost, I don't want to say microscopic because you can't see that, but boy they are really little. And each one of these little containers uh, is going to hold approximately 5,000 of these. We'll flip it around here in a minute and show you, but all they are is a little square. And on that square there's actually moth larvae and those little pieces there, those little uh, wasps, are actually hatching through that larva. So what we've got these for is uh, Mimo Daniel actually on there recommended these and the reason why I was sold on them right away when he said it was two or three years ago, that was two years ago, my son Luke bought a praying mantis like a big, it looks kind of like a big old knot or a mass that you would see on like an oak tree. It was a huge little uh, nest I guess of praying mantis. And that year, we turned those praying mantis loose, and it was just amazing what they did in the garden. So they were phenomenal, so we thought we'd try to give these little things a great harvest. You already saw that we've harvested our broccoli um, and our cabbage, so that's the big thing of what these, uh, what these wasps are here for. But we still have Brussels sprouts, and uh, we'll take you over there now and show you kind of uh, what we're having, what's happening over there. Because once again, we're not spraying anything on them. We're just letting uh, Mother Nature take its course and praying that the Father's going to go ahead and keep them in good standing. Before we go over there, I just want to give you a little outline. So this is the, so I don't know if you can see that real well, but see how that looks like a sandpaper? That's all the moth larva, or the moth eggs. And then in turn, ooh, sorry for the camera fo focusing in and out, but that right there is going to ultimately be 5,000 or more. And we've got three containers, so we've got about 15,000 of these. So we're going to station these throughout our garden, and we're going to set ourselves up for hopefully an effective way for the wasp to start going into the those white moths that I talked about. We're going to see if they can't go ahead and take that larva and actually put their eggs in it kill those caterpillars and break the cycle so that way we don't have to use any chemicals whether it's neem oil or like we talked about last time using fish oil or you know just even using any soap we're going to see if truly mother nature will take its course and uh, we'll take you on this little journey with us but we'll go over now and go look at the uh, brussels sprouts so these are our brussels sprouts I mean, they're not looking bad. You look down inside there, you can see that we've got some Brussels sprouts starting to form. For those of you that aren't aware of them, um, they actually form. Oh, there's one. Yeah, right down there. So you can see them. They actually form basically in kind of the armpit areas of all of the stalks for the leaves that come out. So they're a great little plant. We enjoy them. You know, some people say they're like a miniature cabbage. I love to cook these just in a in a pan with a little bit of butter and just go to town. But you can look and see we've had some we've got some devastation as far as from from those green caterpillars. And those green caterpillars are laid by those white moths that come in at night typically, lay their eggs. So over here we've got a watering tote. And we're gonna go ahead and open up uh, two of those because we're really hoping that uh, in this particular area we'll have uh, this is where we're going to keep most of our fall crops between here and the other garden on the other side of the chicken coop so i'm going to see uh, if we release these here what happens specifically looking at helping ourselves with the brussels sprouts and i'll give you the information uh, for this so here it is it's a uh, natural planet they're out of uh, bozeman montana those of you that haven't been to bozeman montana it's a great place beautiful and uh, it's just a shame what uh, acreage is going for up there but anyway enough on that rant but there's the information for them so if you'd like to get these you're more than welcome to like I said we're just gonna go ahead and release them over here 
And uh, the one big thing it says on the instructions is to make sure ants do not get to them. Ants, I guess, can play havoc with them. So we're going to try it and see. We'll probably put one on the bottom, and then we'll go ahead and put one up top. So that way, one, it's out of the uh, weather, uh, but hopefully still protected, and then they won't get uh, disturbed by the ants. And then I'm going to put one down in our lower garden, uh, close to where we've got some uh, squash don't think it'll help us too much in that area, but we're hoping that these things stick around for longer than a year, and they will actually then uh, do a little bit more for us um, over years to come. Because uh, last year we did see several praying mantis still around, so we're expecting this to be one of those types of things where we can hopefully release them, and then more of them will come back. Well, you can see I was planning on releasing these uh, up on top of this tote, but I lifted up that water cap there, and Boy, there are just ants everywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to find a little different area. Okay, so we're going to take these little things, and again, hopefully you can see them. There's still lots of eggs forming. We want to give them a nice sheltered place. I think I could have kept them in here for probably another day. But what I've got is I've got my trailer parked over here. I don't plan on using it for about the next week. So I'm just going to go ahead and tuck one of them up underneath here. It's got a nice little rubber flap. And expecting that to serve as a great uh, area to keep it out of the weather, out of the heat, but give them the opportunity to go ahead and flourish. And right behind us is where the actual uh, Brussels sprouts are. This one here has all kinds of them. And I'm actually stick this up on top of the chicken coop area. There's plenty of uh, spider webs and other stuff up here. And it's directly beneath it is those Brussels sprouts. And I'm going to place these couple little lid tops because there's, there's quite a bit of activity on them. I'm going to just place them down here right next to the Brussels sprouts. That way they can start crawling up. And hopefully starting to travel where they need to. And then we've got one more to go put out. We'll go put that down in another garden. This is our final one. I'm actually going to tuck this up underneath our beehive. It's real close to some squash that we have down here. And uh, not sure what's hitting it, but something's already uh, started to take out that, uh, that zucchini. Came down here this morning and I pulled off probably 10 or 12 uh, squash bugs on it. But boy, it was still looking good. I think I'm going to well, it's still strong. I think I'm going to pull this little zucchini off. But uh, we'll see what happens. Hopefully we can keep the cover with the little diametaceous earth and be in good shape. So hopefully this, uh, hopefully this idea with these wasps give you an idea on something different that you can maybe do on your homestead. And I thank uh, Daniel uh, Mimo as far as for helping us out with this idea. Like I said, we did it in years past with uh, praying mantis, and it was phenomenal. So we're going to hope uh, that these little wasps give us a great boost, too. It will be something else that we can continue to propagate here on our homestead and just continue to uh, just keep us greener, more organic, if there is such a thing. So thanks again for watching. If you got any questions, please put them on the bottom. I don't know if I'll, I'll be able to answer them. But uh, I'm sure between us all, we can look it up and figure it out and probably share some good knowledge. If you've had any good success with these, please let us know. Shalom.